This was probably the first playoff game since the second round that was just flat out ugly. It wasn't ever really competitive. Dallas wins the series four games to one with a final score of 124 to 103. And I gotta say, Luka and Kyrie are straight up killers, man. And it's funny because Minnesota had won just one freaking game and was barely surviving and barely keeping hope alive for themselves. And ESPN immediately couldn't help themselves from calling Anthony Edwards again the next Michael Jordan. Guy who I think right now you can include Luka, you can include uh, Giannis, you can include Jokic, you can include anyone you want. Over the next 10 years, the guy I think will win more championships than any of them is Anthony Edwards. And he is the heir to Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant. He's not faking it. He's not Let's be honest. The players who have the killer instinct of Michael Jordan have been Luka and Kyrie this entire series. Luka had 36 points, 10 rebounds, and 5 assists on 64% shooting. Kyrie had 36 points of his own on 52% shooting. The game looked like it was over since the first quarter, as Luka was unconscious from the start of the first. This Dallas team is executing beautifully, both offensively and defensively, and they're communicating very well together. Now I gotta say, poor Derek Lively can't catch a break as he took yet another blow to the back of the head. Fortunately, he was back on the court and Dallas continued to abuse Minnesota. Now, Anthony Edwards and Carl Anthony Towns both had good games, but they were the only players who scored in double digits. They simply had no help, and because of that, along with Dallas having their two stars play like their two stars, Dallas ran away with it. It's as I said in the last video, yes, Minnesota kept hope alive for themselves by avoiding a sweep. But you have to consider that in the last game, Luka and Kyrie didn't have Lively, and Luka and Kyrie shot 13 of 39 from the field. You knew they weren't going to do that again, and because of that, Minnesota wasn't ready when they punched back. They came into this game looking like they were supposed to win simply because they had home court advantage. They didn't have any energy, they looked lethargic, and frankly, they looked like an immature and young team. Luka and Kyrie outscored the entire Timberwolves team in the first half, 44-40. Midway through the third quarter, Minnesota was trying to get something going, but Luka and Kyrie just kept crushing their spirits every time they tried. As we've said time and time again, they're just simply the most clutch players involved in this battle. Now one thing to criticize about Mavericks, and you really were lucky Mavericks fans that this wasn't more serious. I really hate the fact that the Mavericks were up by 23 points with 7 minutes left in the 4th quarter and Jason Kidd subbed Luka back in. Like, why was that even necessary? If he had got hurt in those final 7 minutes, Jason Kidd would have had to stay inside his house for the next several months straight, for the fact that Dallas fans would be looking for him. And then of course, right after I write this note down and bring up the fact that I should talk about this in the video, Luka takes a brutal hit from Towns with less than 5 minutes left to go in the 4th. I don't care if they're the winning team, that's just a boneheaded substitution by Jason Kidd. And Dallas really dodged a bullet by having that not be more serious. Luka was even bleeding from his left knee at that point. And then, Kidd kept him in after he took the hit. Listen. I don't care what Stan Van Gundy or Reggie Miller say about Minnesota keeping their starters in. Show me one playoff game where a team came back from a 23 point deficit with 3 minutes left in the game. Have some damn confidence in your other guys. With that being said, Dallas won. I'm just saying, when you're blowing a team out by as many points as they were, just take your star out man. Plan ahead for the finals, especially with a guy as banged up as Luka. Now speaking of Stan Van Gundy, he did bring up once again the fact that he believes that Kyrie and Luka are the best scoring backcourt in NBA history. And I gotta be honest, I don't really think this is that much of a hot take. I mean look at the guys they have to compete against. We're talking about a backcourt, so point guard and shooting guard. You have guys like Walt Frazier and Earl Monroe. You have guys like Isaiah Thomas and Joe Dumars, and Dumars especially is underrated. You have another couple great guards in Jerry West and Gail Goodrich, and they were especially amazing in the 1972 championship run for the Lakers. I think the strongest competition to Luka and Kyrie is probably Steph and Clay. They're certainly the most accomplished pair, but when you consider talent and what they're capable of offensively, I think this really isn't even much of a conversation. Of course it's Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving. 
Either of these guys are capable of being the best player on a contending team, and both of these guys have the skills to dominate guys one-on-one -on -one and take over fourth quarters of meaningful games. From that perspective, it's barely even a debate. Now Minnesota's going home, and again, like I said, I do like Anthony Edwards. He's only 22 years old, and this team can make some adjustments. I don't know if they're going to run it back with the same team, I imagine they probably are, but they even have some flexibility as a guy like Nas Reed and Carl Anthony Towns are both capable of starting at the four. If they wanted to flip one of those guys and gain some assets in return, they could certainly do that. But I imagine having arguably the greatest season in Minnesota Timberwolves history, they're probably just going to run it back. I do want to throw out there, shout out to the Wolves fans in attendance for tonight's game as they were chanting for their team after getting blown out. That was truly a classy display and just shows the gratitude of a fan base that rarely makes it this far into the playoffs. So now we're moving on. NBA Finals start June 6th. You got the Dallas Mavericks and you got the Boston Celtics. Honestly, I don't know who to pick in this series. On one hand, the Eastern Conference kind of looks like a cakewalk in comparison to the West. I just feel like the West was a gauntlet as there was more strong teams out there. With that being said, Boston is a team who's been here multiple times now. They're extremely talented. They have two of the best wings in the league and they have a shot. I'm going to avoid picking any winner in this series simply because there's just no way I can remove my bias. I will be rooting for Dallas in this series. I don't like Boston. I'm a Lakers fan. I've never liked Boston. And if Boston wins the championship, they will have one more championship in their franchise's history than the Lakers. And I don't want to see that happen. So temporarily, I will be a Dallas Mavericks fan. Seeing Kyrie go against his former team in Boston, there's going to be a lot of drama there. And I'm looking forward to covering that with an upcoming video. But let me know how you guys are feeling about this upcoming final series. Who wins and how many games is it going? I'm sure you're going to be a lot more objective about it than I can be. Thanks for watching as always. Make sure to like and subscribe for more basketball content. And I'll see you guys in the next video.